He also began using drugs. He was in and out of jail and also prison many times. Drugs and alcohol took away his children and also his freedom. He tried AA and the therapeutic community, but nothing worked for him. It wasn't until 10 days before his 42nd birthday, on January 13th of 2012, that he woke up and stopped everything completely. Today, he gives God all the glory and praise for the sober life that he enjoys now. Please hear my welcome, Robert Wayne Slack. How are y'all tonight? First of all, this is not the Robert Show. This is the God Show. God did all of I tried to quit for years and years and couldn't. It was all God. It was deliverance from God eight years ago, the 13th of January. And it brought me to where I am. Today. If you've never been addicted, you don't understand the pain and the torment that you go through. You don't understand the hopelessness and the lonely feelings. A lot of people think that addicts and alcoholics are just, you know, they run the mill, do what they want to, they don't care about nothing, but, but that's not the truth. The truth is that you're bound with something that you can't get free of, and you don't understand why. You wake up every morning and want to quit, and before the evening you're back doing it again. I come from the age and the era when they used to put beer in the baby's bottle to put him to sleep. I was raised in Houston, Texas. My dad was close affiliated with the banditos out of Houston, Texas. So we had biker parties and stuff at our house all the time. And it was a pretty poor environment to be raised in. All I knew was, you know, drinking, drugging, fighting, chasing women. I mean, that's what you did. And Coming out of that lifestyle and trying to live a family life was, was hard. And I ended up losing my children because of it. And I wrote down one of my testimonies here that I'll share with you. If I can share it without crying. It's pretty emotional for me. A true testimony. Of, a true testimony of the heart. frantic, stumbling down the sidewalk. It's been a week, no food and no sleep. The booming sound of traffic passing on my right as uncontrollable tears stain my dirty face. Loneliness and hopelessness aggressively hold me hostage every time I start to sober up in my days. So I try to stay high. But the inevitable always happens and the money runs out. The suffocating sun is melting me in my place. My hand, my, my mind is shot. Grief and despair is consuming me. I can't catch a forward thought into the future because I'm too busy reliving the past. I reach down in my pocket and I feel silver. Just enough to give me one more beer, my drink of choice. Malt liquor, the strongest, of course. That way maybe it'll destroy my liver faster. Why do I care? My life's a disaster. Ongoing regrets of a life that's been thrown away. Poor choices I've made. I can't go back. There's no way. Traumatized and feeling shame. I'm demoralized. I can't go to God. Not like this. Why should he want me now anyways? There's nothing left. Ready to end it all. I shout. If I had a razor blade, I'd cut my wrist. In less than a mile to the beer store. Halfway there, I look down. As if on cue in the middle of the sidewalk, there's a shiny razor blade. It's no big shock. I know the enemy wants to take me out. I put the razor blade in the pocket of my shirt, and I say with a loud voice, thank you. And believe me, I know exactly who I was thanking. As I continued my way to the store, moments later I crossed two lanes of traffic, and I hear the noise of the freeway in front of me. I feel the concrete under my feet as I climb the embankment. Ducking my head, I make my way to the last place I'll ever sit. The coroner will be called soon. I take another swig of that hot, stale bottle of courage sitting on my right. The place smells like death. The sound of the bump, 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 bump overhead is nauseating, but it doesn't compare to the noise inside my head. 
I look down and I find a vein in my left arm and I cut it. Then I place it between my knees and wait for the inevitable. I take another swig of my beer and I cry out in rage as I remember all the losses that I've encountered because of my selfish choices. I look down and see not a drop of blood is falling. Angry, I take the razor blade and I cut the other arm in two places deeper this time. The blood starts to flow and hang between my knees. The beer doesn't end, ease the pain and waiting to feel the calm, peaceful silence. But all I hear is the bump, 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 bump overhead. And I look down and see that that blood is dried up also. This time I scream out, God, why won't you let me die? That's when I heard the still, quiet voice of God. I'll never forget it. He whispered in my head, because you haven't done what I've sent you there to do yet. It was that day, one of the darkest days of my life, that I heard the voice of God, and I felt His awesome love, and His graceful presence as He held this broken man. I had to be broke to a level that most people can't imagine in order for God to reach me. It was because of that that he put me on the path I'm on today. He has completely restored and reunified my family. He has given me everything back. I even have respect from people now. They look at me as a productive member of society because God entered here. Corinthians talks about becoming a new creation. The old man's dead, the new, new creation becomes. I can attest to that. I'm living proof. If you want it, it's there. But it's hard. Because you got to want it more than you want anything else. When I was drugging, I lived every moment of my life trying to figure out how to get the next drug. Every moment. There wasn't, there wasn't a dead moment at all in my thoughts when I wasn't thinking about how to get some more done. you got to pursue sobriety that way. You gotta wake up every morning and say, I'm sober again, thank you, Lord, and move every moment of your day thinking how I'm gonna stay sober. Because if you don't, the enemy's right there waiting on you. I've been in prison three times. I've been in more county jails than I can count. And it's all because of what I did, my choices. Pursue God, pursue sobriety, however it works. I went through behavior modification twice. Great program. Got out. World Bible Tech. Got my heart. I'm going to do it this time. Then I got off work. I deserve a beer. Worked hard this week. I deserve a beer. Right back off the deep. I'm gone. If you want it, you can get it. If you're playing games with it, it'll consume you. I'll just stop somebody.